Do you want to do that during yours? Yeah. 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 Hi, Rams. Oh, great. Thank you. Unless you want me to. I think it'd be, since you're doing the proclamation, it should be you. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, okay. I'm trying to be agreeable. <laughs> Is that hard to get? What's that? Is that hard? Oh my God, you have no idea. Okay. 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 Everybody ready? No. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, there, now we go. Well, good evening and welcome to the Federal City Council meeting uh, for July 19th of uh, 2016. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? And John Hutton, our Parks Director, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all right, it's great to see everybody here. Welcome. Okay, uh, let's get right down to business. Uh, we've got uh, proclamations. National Friendship Day, August 7th, uh, 2016. I've got a uh, proclamation, and we could have uh, uh, Nick Wilson and uh, uh, Skyman uh, approach the podium, please. Skyman's our local uh, superhero. Nick Wilson is a, uh, a, a local resident who had this idea about uh, National Friendship Day. I'll go ahead and read it and let them talk a bit. Okay. It reads, National Friendship Day, August 7th, 2016. Whereas, whereas, National Friendship Day is a meaningful holiday reminding us to observe this day in an appropriate manner in accordance with the culture and other um, appropriate circumstances or uh, customs in their local, national, and regional communities, including through educational and public awareness uh, raising activities. And whereas Friendship Day helps people in recovery so they can heal and help one another, including those facing the tragic thoughts of suicide, and whereas saying a simple hello or being kind can literally change the life of someone you may not even know, and whereas Friendship Day promotes happiness and health to our community, and whereas Federal Resident Nick Wilson, our very own superhero Skyman, have promoted the importance of this day, showing a true and meaningful example of what it is to be a friend. And now, therefore, we, the undersigned mayor and city council of the city of Federal Way, do hereby proclaim August 7th, of 2016 as Friendship Day and encourage everyone in our community to reach out to their friends and say hello even if, and even try to make a new friend or two. Signed this 19th day of July 2016. Right. Well, uh, Thank you for all being here today. Thank you for all my supporters. Um, you know, I'm feeling very blessed right now. You know, I feel very blessed to have a good, caring community that we just need to start caring a little bit more about the people around us. And it's so funny. I had this idea that it needed came back, but if it wasn't for Skyman, actually, he's the one that really actually motivated me the first time to speak up. And he said, you should go up and speak up. And I said, I don't know, man. I don't think you're going to get it. And he's like, no, 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 just, just give it one shot. And if they don't like it, or just, just walk away, you know, and you don't have to go back ever again, you know. And ever since then, when I introduced myself to the mayor, and he said I liked it, and come back to the next one, I just kept plugging away, supporting it, trying to figure out every next fact and everything. And I'm just feeling extremely blessed right now by everyone, the council members, the mayor. This really got through, and I thank you all very much for this. Uh, and if any of Skyman wants to say something to my good friend Pierre, you're really welcome to say something real quick. Greetings, salutations, citizens of Federal Way. Thank you for honoring National Friendship Day. I want to plug a small informal event happening on August 7, 2016. I believe we will hold it in Town Square Park, our brand new park here in Federal Way that should be the number one attraction when you head to, t head to our downtown corridor. Um, stay tuned to a Facebook page. We will have an event page up with special details and where we're at in Town Square Park and what we're going to do. Hopefully it's just an 
informal afternoon get together, maybe a barbecue, who knows? Thank you. Let me just say that I, I think what really, and I think what's really resonated with the council and myself has been an understanding that really the fabric of our community and our lives is made up of our relationships, our friendships, our family, the people that, that bind us together. Um, and that's why I think we've had uh, uh, Nick and, and uh, has received so much uh, support from the council and, and uh, from myself and, and why we think this is a good idea to you know, get together and, and let people know uh, that we care about them. And, and I think there's going to be a uh, postcard uh, exchange. I think the origins of National Friendship Day actually go back to the 1930s. And, uh, and then it went on for another 10 years. And somehow, like many traditions, sometimes they just fall off. And so this is an opportunity. I know that uh, Councilmember Honda and several other council members have met with uh, Nick Wilson and, and talked with, uh, about this. And I think the first uh, National Friendship Day or, or uh, honoring here in our community will be a casual one. But we encourage everybody to uh, show up at Town Square Park. What time again? Pay attention to the Facebook page. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Probably early afternoon. All right, casual affair. So you guys, let's come on down for a, uh, uh, let's all be friends. Come on down to the uh, front of the podium and let's take a picture. Okay. Oh, wait a Everybody seated? Okay, now uh, item B, uh, proclamation, salute to Boeing 100 years. Councilmember Maloney. Thank you. Um, I am excited to ask Jesse Uman, Boeing manager for state and local government, to join me at the podium where I will read a proclamation and then present it. And if there are any current or retired Boeing employees in the audience, please um, go on up to the podium with Jesse and uh, be a part of it. It's exciting. Okay, whereas the Boeing Company Centennial occurs on or occurred on July 15, 2016, and whereas the Boeing Company founded in Seattle, Washington by William Edward Boeing grew from a small red barn on the shores of the Duwamish River to the largest aerospace and defense contractor in the world, the larger exporter in the United States providing products to 150 companies, was named the number one innovator among aerospace and defense companies, and whereas the Boeing Company contributes significantly to the health of the state of Washington, employing more than 79,000 people in the state and purchasing $5.7 billion annually in materials, supplies, and services from 1,943 Washington state vendors, and whereas with the Boeing Company at its root, Washington has become one of the largest aerospace industry clusters in the world supporting more than 1,350 aerospace and related companies that directly and indirectly support more than a quarter of a million jobs 
and generate $85.7 billion in annual economic activity, and whereas the Boeing Company embraces a culture of caring and support for all, encouraging employees to volunteer and investing more than $53 million annually in the areas of education, health and human services, arts and culture, environment and civic engagement, and whereas the Boeing Company on a national level employs more than 23,000 veterans, many still serving in the National Guard and Reserve, and partners with more than 50 airline customers, completing over 170 humanitarian relief flights since 1992. And now, therefore, we, the undersigned mayor and city council of the city of Federal Way, do hereby recognize and celebrate the Boeing Company and the thousands of proud Boeing employees for the significant contributions they have made to, federal, to the Federal Way community over the past 100 years, signed this 19th day of July 2016, Federal Way Mayor and City Council. So, Jesse, if you want to say, sure. say a few words, and then the uh, mayor and the council will come down. We'll get a picture with you and the other with the Boeing employees who are here. Great. Thank, thank you so much. Mr. Mayor, city council members, thank you very much for this uh, honor and this award on our 100th anniversary and uh, Boeing's birthday. Uh, it's my privilege to accept this on behalf of the company, the 79,000 employees that are currently there, but also all the retirees that live uh, throughout Washington State, as well as our suppliers, vendors, and all the community members that are touched by the Boeing Company somehow. Um, it's pretty amazing to think about in 1916 that uh, Bill Boeing built two uh, small B&W airplanes that um, then turned into a order for 50 Model Cs uh, that went to the U.S. Navy in 1916, and now today to be the largest aerospace company in the world. Um, a lot of that has to do with the men and women who have worked at Boeing, who are from Washington State, who have lived in Washington State, and have given so much to the company, as well as to the communities they're members of, as well as to the family members of Boeing employees, who have understood when they've had to work long hours and weekends to get that airplane um, to a customer on time. So these are very, very exciting times for the Boeing company, but they're also very challenging times. Um, very proud that we have two new airplanes that are gonna be, uh, be built exclusively in Walsh Washington State. The 777X in Everett, as well as the 737 MAX in Renton. The 737 MAX is the new version of the 737. Uh, we have four of those airplanes built right now. They're in flight tests. They're gonna be delivered at the start of next year. And then last year, um, we invested over a billion dollars in a new carbon fiber manufacturing facility in Everett, in which it's gonna uh, build the new wing for the uh, 777X airplane. And uh, we'll have that flying in a couple years here. So. Um, very, very fortunate to accept this award and this uh, honor for the company. Thank you for the, uh, uh, the city and your partnership and uh, look forward to another 100 years. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Oh, I think uh, Councilmember Moore has just a real quick comment. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Kelly Maloney, you actually stand right next to my, and I want to introduce him. Uh, Chris Anderson, he is my, uh, future father-in-law, and I know that he's been at Bowen and dedicated, and I know he's been very passionate. He gets very excited in our family conversations. He gets very excited about talking about Boeing and, and the work that he does. So I just wanted to publicly also thank you for the work you've been doing. Yeah. Oh, and that, that's Claire as, as well, yeah. my future sister-in-law. And I would just like to point out that one of your peers, Councilmember Maloney, is one of the great partners with the Boeing Company running the Aerospace Futures Alliance and representing so many of the suppliers and vendors that work with the company, um, not only with local governments, but in Olympia. And so really appreciate the partnership with Kelly. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We'd like to take pictures here.
Great. All right. Now the next uh, item we have, item C, is volunteer recognition. Uh, we have with us uh, Council Member Asefa Dawson uh, here to introduce uh, Northwest Church Senior Pastor Stephen Schell. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to invite um, Pastor Stephen Schell and Human Services Commission Member Jan, Jan Owens to the podium, please, while I read. Senior Pastor Charles Stephen Schell of Northwest Church, uh, Church and Federal Way has not only given to the community personally, he has encouraged his congregation to get involved in public service since 1991. Under his leadership, the church has host hosted basketball nights, other programs for youth in the Westway neighborhood, feeding hundreds of families weekly with the food pantry, making dreams come true to families in need during the holiday and other countless um, seasons. And right now, um, I would like to invite Jan Owens to the podium and to tell us a little bit about Pastor Shell. And then after that, I'll read the pro uh, proclamation. Thank you. Or yours. It's my pleasure, on behalf of the, C of the Human Services Commission, to honor Pastor Steve and also Mary Shell um, of Northwest Church. And I thank the council for giving them this special recognition tonight and Mayor Farrell. Um, and I just want to let you know that uh, since I moved to the community uh, prior to being on the commission, it just struck me that this is a really special church and this is a special senior pastor. The commitment to serving community members below the radar. Um, in fact, I'm sure they really don't even want me to talk too much tonight and I've decided not to about the specific ministries that they do in this community. But um, you have an idea from what you've heard and from the email that I sent. Um, but there are also a lot of leaders, commissioners, school board members, and other people in the community that have been encouraged and mentored to serve the city because of the leadership of Pastor Stephen Shell. Um, and uh, I just want to thank him and Northwest Church and his wonderful partner, uh, Mary Shell, for all the work that they've done on behalf of the commission. I too wanna to add that Jan, that you are also, I've served with Jan on the Human Services Commission, um, I think for two years, and you're an incredible leader and um, your service to the community is also invaluable. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you. a certificate of appreciation for senior pastor Charles Stevens Shell. On behalf of the elected officials and citizens of Federal Way, Washington, we recognize and appreciate your outstanding contributions to our community through your public service and leadership since 1991, embodying the true meaning of unconditional giving. Signed, Mayor and City Council members, dated this 19th day of July, 2016. Thank you very much for your, for your kind recognition. Um, Mary and I have been here, it'll be 25 years uh, this fall, and we've loved this city. And uh, I stand here receiving a certificate, but I'm not the one deserving it. Um, you've mentioned a number of ministries and things, and it's the people of this, of this community who have done these services. I get to pastor them. I get to, I get to, to teach the Bible and that kind of thing while they do the work. And I've, I've been, some of the things you've mentioned uh, I wanted to, 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 to point out, and that's uh, Debbie Moore, would you stand, and, and Sandra Andrews. These two women have, have, have and, uh, carried up what's called a food pantry. They feed about 160 families every two weeks, have for probably 15 years. It's steady, it's beautiful, it's lovely. Um, and I, I just wanted to thank, to thank them. Sean O'Leary, would you stand? Uh, you mentioned some of our community outreaches to some of the ne needy areas. Sean has been doing this for 20 years, not just a few, not a, not a few months. He has been faithfully, uh, with, with almost uh, just our prayers and our, our attaboys, uh, he has continued to reach out and serve our community and still does. Uh, we, have, we have actually um, hundreds of youth that come every week, and uh, Sean is often driving kids and we have a bus and all that kind of thing. And I just wanted to thank Sean and honor him. 
One person on, you mentioned on this was uh, the basketball. Uh, tonight, uh, the person who's running that isn't here because he has about 50 to 60 young men in, a, in our gym playing basketball tonight from the community. That's Ron Walker, and I think many of you know him, and, and we love him. He is, he's doing that. My wife is the one who coordinates and makes all of this happen. Uh, I just hear about it. Uh, I, I, I get to, to stand and enjoy it. Uh, but I want to thank Mary and for all of the coordination and organization she does. We have a, I, you've said it, I've read it in the papers and all, you've said what a fine community we have, uh, people who do love our city, and we really do have such people, who love the city and who serve and roll up their sleeves and, and work not just a few times, but work hard. Uh, we have hundreds of people who volunteer uh, uh, Christmas gifts. I think they give gifts to like 600 children every every Christmas. Beautiful packages with with bears and all kinds of things tied into them and that sort of thing. So it's it's very loving. They they give uh, food to every Thanksgiving to hundreds of, of families. Now I don't do it. I get to watch. But you have that kind of people in Federal Way. Great people. And it's been a pr privilege to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And Pastor. Pastor, can you lead your, uh, the folks that you've identified uh, to come up? We're going to get a big picture. And Council, let's go back down again. That's great. We have a great community. It's great to see that. Jan, thank you so much uh, for letting us know, and I think many of us do know about the great work uh, that goes on at that church. And thank you, Pastor, and everyone that you, and, and for the flock, uh, for all of that they do. We really appreciate it. It is, just like we were talking about with National Friendship Day, it's the fabric of which our community is really uh, built upon that, that lends a helping hand to so many different people. Um, okay, uh, next item, item D, Certificates of Appointment with the Diversity Commission. Council Member Kopech. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, at the July 15th meeting, uh, the council was pleased to appoint the following people to the Diversity Commission. Hiroshi Eto, Trenise Rogers, William Yee, and Randall Smith. And I saw Trenise here. Trenise, if you could join me at the lectern, go ahead and read the uh, certificate and I'll meet you down there. But uh, uh, what it says, and it actually is identical for all four commissioners, is uh, in this case, Trenise Rogers is hereby reappointed to serve as a voting member of the Federal Way Diversity Commission for a term to expire May 31st, 2019, signed by the mayor and all the council members. And I wanted to say how valuable I believe this diversity commission is to our community and uh, how much I appreciate their service. So anyway.
feel blessed and honored to have this opportunity to serve on the Racing Commission. And I'm just, I'm just really excited about the work and participating and celebrating our diversity here in Federal Way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, congratulations. <clears throat> All right, now moving into a, major, a mayor's emerging issues and report. Uh, we have uh, item number one, the Town Square Park grand opening. Uh, John Hutton, our Parks Director. John. Thank you, Mayor, Deputy Mayor Burbage, and members of City Council. I'm here to report tonight on the grand opening of Town Square Park, which happened on uh, Saturday, July 9th, and it was a great event. Uh, lots of fun. We had a great time. I'm going to run you through some slides, and uh, I can tell you that the event was very well attended. The bands were really fun. That's our opening band, the Spasmatics. And uh, they did a great job. They had a really fun time with 80s rock and roll. Everybody loved them. Um, and uh, we had people up and dancing. It was a lot of fun. Um, the, you'll see a lot of these faces over at uh, Town Square Park. That playground is wildly popular, and the zip line is, uh, well, if it's not the number one attraction, it, I think it's the number one attraction. It's awesome. Uh, kids just love it. Adults love it. Everybody has a great time. And as you can see, uh, children are having a great time on that. Uh, in the foreground is our uh, little two to five year old dome with lots of different play uh, opportunities for kids. Uh, they love that. That's well attended and uh, well used every day. And you can see in the foreground the young man on the little ladybug. Uh, um, that's a lot of fun too. And we have a bumblebee. Those are spring toys and they're wildly popular with the little ones. Uh, here's an overview of the entire playground. So in the foreground you see the Explorer Dome. And then the long linear zip line in between the two is called the Oodle Swing, and that thing is really popular as well. Um, uh, the sponsors in the community uh, booths were well attended. They had a great time. Uh, our food truck uh, did a great job, and their food was delicious. Um, there's the basketball courts have been really well attended. Both of them have kids and adults on them uh, all the time. Uh, there is the uh, large inflatable slide, obviously very fun. Um, and here is the, uh, the real main attraction, not inside the playground, but this is our, our spray park. And we are incredibly proud of this. Uh, it is just a terrific uh, uh, piece. It's very unique with the three pillars in the middle. Um, those are really cool. Those function as a fountain in the evening when it's not functioning as a spray park. As you can see, all around, uh, there's a circle of nozzles. Those go on and off. And there's three center brass uh, features in the middle that. Uh, have unique spray feature ability to them. And so it is just a ton of fun. We've had kids on it every day. Um, here is the ribbon cutting ceremony. You can see the nice balloons and the arch uh, in, front of the, uh, in front of the city council and the mayor getting ready to cut the ribbon. And there's a special guest up front, looks like young Ben Farrell to me, I believe, <laughs> uh, helping cut that ribbon. So uh, there's the mayor getting ready to address uh, the crowd and, and uh, get it going big time, and it has been tons of fun. You see a lot of that over there. Little kids just having fun, big kids having fun, adults having fun. Uh, it has really brought the community together. Town Square Park is just wildly popular from early in the morning until late at night. Uh, <coughs> thanks to our good friends at Nintendo who invented Pokemon three days before we opened. We have a lot of late night visitors. Uh, they're not causing any trouble, but they're there. Um, here is some more great shots of the spray park, and the little kids' reaction is just priceless. Uh, you can see the parents in the background having a great time watching them. Everybody is having fun. So Town Square Park uh, grand opening was terrific. Couldn't have asked for anything more. Both bands did a great job. Our speakers did a great job. Happy people throughout the park. I talked to people all day. I saw uh, our city council members out there. Our mayor was out there. We had a great turnout, and uh, everybody had fun. So I'm happy to answer any questions about the park uh, that you may have. Well, I would say that on Sunday I got a phone call <clears throat> I was just out of town. I got a phone call from a friend who said they drove by the park and they, it was absolutely jam-packed and the, the, uh, every parking space was taken and uh, kids were running through. On the next day, uh, I went through and even though that it started to rain, there was probably a couple of dozen people in the park mm -hmm. and people playing basketball. And then today I got a phone call again about 5 o'clock and I'm, I heard that there's about 150 people. So it's, it sounds like it's well loved and will be well used. It is well loved and people are just very complimentary. Uh, we've got nothing but uh, really positive feedback on the park uh, and uh, we, we just couldn't be happier. Uh, people are treating the park great. Um, we have people out there doing exactly what we want, having fun, good wholesome activities. Everybody's having a lot of fun and it's a great uh, addition to our community. Councilmember Copang, did you have something? 
I will say, uh, Director Hutton, I want to thank you for the blood, sweat, and tears that you put into getting that park opened on time. I know that you and your staff worked very hard and uh, definitely appreciative of the, the above and beyond um, efforts that went into that, that effort um, by you, the staff, and even volunteers on the, on the city staff as well. I mean, there was a lot of collaborative collaboration on getting that thing done, and it uh, was really, really appreciated by the council, certainly. Thank you, thank you very much. I want to say that the staff uh, across the city, uh, staff was tremendous, with tremendous support. Our volunteers were just phenomenal. Um, we had some huge volunteer groups from AmeriCorps, from LDS Church, uh, we love our city. There is so many groups of great people. I echo uh, what the pastor said about what a great community we are fortunate enough to live in, that people couldn't wait to come out and help. And without their help, we wouldn't have been able to deliver. Uh, they did a great job, and those volunteers uh, are tireless and very, very much appreciated. So thank you very much for saying that. Uh, so, and, and John, you've got a great team. I, I think we, we're all unanimous in, in our appreciation uh, for all of your team. And I, we know it came down. We wanted to make sure that the park, uh, you know, opened in time for everybody to enjoy uh, it for the summer and the hot weather. But we know that it was, it was really uh, a stretch, and, and all of your people, it was all hands on deck. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, Councilmember Duclo was actually the uh, uh, was able to t uh, test uh, the zip line first. Now, so thank now, you. now you're taking my report, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I happened to stop by the day before and just to see how things were coming along. I didn't want to interfere with anything, and and John saw me and he said, "You want to try the zip line?" That's all you had to say. I was on that baby going and coming back. <laughs> I met with no resistance. That's yes, right. I wanted to make sure it was all right for the children. Exactly. <laughs> Quality control. All right. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Appreciate much. it. Oh, hey, um, and did you talk about the uh, movie? Oh, Summer Movies. It's the next thing on the uh, agenda. Yeah, I want to invite everybody out to uh, our first big program since our grand opening, after the grand, uh, after the grand opening. So we are having two movies in the park. These are free to the public. Uh, these are really fun. We have a giant 40-foot inflatable screen coming out. Um, we're going to show Pan on July 30th. Uh, it'll be about 9 o'clock. We have to wait for it to be completely dark. Uh, if any of you had the... Uh, uh, pleasure of seeing the other movies that we've shown in the park. You, I can tell you it's a unique and fun experience. Uh, it's great. The quality of the film is excellent. The quality of the sound is excellent. Um, you will have a good time. Your entire family will. I encourage you to bring a lawn chair. Um, you can sit either on the plaza or in the grass. Um, kids can enjoy the playground. Um, we'll probably leave the spray park on a little bit and hopefully we'll have a great, uh, great evening. Love to see you out. We have a second movie coming up on August 27th. We're going to show uh, Inside Out, which is a terrific movie as well. These are all, of course, family-friendly movies, and we want to invite everybody out. We'd love to pack the park, and uh, um, we have had great attendance at previous ones, and I expect it to be even better uh, at, at the ones that are coming up. So. All right, come on out for the for July. It's next Saturday. Next Saturday. Uh, with some free, po free popcorn, free movies. So That's correct. Sounds good. All right, thank you very much, John. Thank you. Kim. Uh, all right, uh, National Night Out, August 2nd, Deputy Chief Neal. I think the police department enjoys this activity more than any other in the summer. It gives us an opportunity to go out and meet with the public in a, in a casual setting. And uh, the way it works for us is there's many of uh, these activities set up throughout the city and uh, our Crime Prevention Specialist Lindsay Sperry puts together a uh, schedule for us. Uh, we're all, uh, we all get the whip cracked on us to make sure that we attend all of these events. It's an all hands on deck type of an activity for the command staff and other people in the police department. Something that we really enjoy and I think we really get a lot out of it every year. Yeah, it's, it's a great event. Uh, it's, uh, it's really a, so many that, I mean, how many do we have? Like, uh, around 30 it, at least and and I think it grows every year and uh, but it, it's uh, the hospitality the food uh, a cold drink on a on a summer night I think I put on five pounds in one night last year so yeah, you gotta know how to pace yourself one, one well, chicken leg per I try to but and then sometimes I try to keep from going back to some places twice that's but, right uh, that's right okay. but it really is a, a great event we're looking forward to it again and uh, hopefully it'll be as good a weather as it was last year awesome thank you chief yeah. Okay, um, 
And just remind everybody about our schedule. Because of National Night Out, uh, the council has made a policy decision uh, to, um, uh, to move the first meeting in, sept in, uh, in August to the second week. Normally our city council meetings are on the first and third Tuesdays of the month. Uh, National Night Out always occurs on the first Tuesday of the month. So we've made a decision, uh, the council has made a decision collectively uh, and unanimously to move that first meeting uh, to the second week so uh, we can be in attendance. There were many years uh, before we started doing this, I think two or three years ago, uh, where we would just miss the opportunity to see uh, members out in the community. And just to let everybody know, uh, that's been tra the tradition uh, for at least uh, as long as I've been mayor and the 10 years I was on the council, that we always cancel the second meeting in August uh, so people could take vacation, take a little bit of time with their family. So the one city council meeting, to recap, the one city council meeting uh, in the month of August uh, will be on the 9th at 7 p.m. here. Uh, and on the 2nd, we encourage people to take part uh, and participate in National Night Out. So I hope that helps in regard to uh, uh, how things are going to play out. Uh, that's my report. Uh, let's move on to the most important part of the evening, which is citizen comment. Uh, and the first one I have here is Bob Willie. Bob? It's always good to see a good attendance at the Twin Lakes Golf and Country Club annual book club. Uh, I have my Cessna 01 bird dog hat on. I flew bird dogs in Vietnam. I've got a bird dog tie on. I've got a bird dog shirt on. I even have a bird dog t-shirt on. And I'm the author of the bird dog's tail. It'll be on sale at the back table after the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the agenda for the Twin Lakes Country Club Book Club at 8.30 tonight. I, I'm off by about an hour. Uh, please excuse my uh, misfortune of not knowing where I really was. But I do have my Twin Lakes Golf Club shirt on. City Council, citizens of Federal Way, and especially the Boy Scouts of Federal Way who appeared with me on the 17th of February when I first appeared before the City Council on the matter dealing with Lake Jean. We have not heard very much of what Camp Killaworth's situation is, but Boy Scouts, Come back and give us a report. I'm at least interested on what y'all's status is in, go in regards to Camp Killaworth. Mr. Mayor, I have a pink slip here. I took one home. This is a promise. I will not appear before this podium again as a pink slip candidate to talk about the public nuisance initiative that we have. The next time I appear, we will either be on the agenda for the city council or you won't see me here again. Mr. Mayor, it's been reported that you are a strong mayor type of city council. I commend you for that. You are a good mayor for the city of Federal Way. You attend meetings, the other council members attend meetings, you are a good council. You are a strong leader of this city council. If we are going to have success for Lake Jean's public nuisance initiative, we need your approval. 
There was a relook indicated at the last meeting. It occurred. For the last four meetings, the residents of Lake Jean has asked to hear from the city council and even from the city. The chief of staff, Brian Wilson, gave an interview, a written interview to the Mira staff. The result is we still, as residents, don't have any information that's forthcoming. However, I did give an interview to the city, to the Mira, in regards to the circumstances. The Mira staff is indicated that they are going to publish in this Friday's edition an article about Lake Jean. We will wait and see how that article turns out, and I'm almost sure there will be additional articles. These are two samples. One is from Lake Lorene, our sister lake, and one is from Lake Jean. One is non-toxic, one is toxic. <laughs> There's a picture. Go ahead, please, please. Uh, There's a picture of the slough on Lake Jean. This slough and the three residences that live on that slough have been granted <clears throat> 34,000 reduction in the value of their land property because of the toxicity on Lake Jean. A very good thing undertaken by the tax assessor for King County. Mr. Mayor, allow a vote by the city council concerning our nuisance ordinance. We are prepared to accept the city council's wherewithal to hear our plea beginning in February, and we are prepared to accept whatever that decision is, but give us a vote. If not, please give us a written response as to why the city council can't take any action and be specific as to what the rationale is. No action is a status quo. That is what the Twin Lakes Golf and Country Club wants. We are asking for a change in the status quo initiated by the city council. National Night Out is a good night. We invite you your advisory team, and all the members of the city council to stop by and enjoy one of Don Smith's Al Jatini's, <laughs> if you're so inclined. Okay, if you do come, please be prepared to speak to the residents and give us your best advice of what we should do in the event that the city council can't take action. Thank you for the extra time. I will not be a pink slip candidate again. That's a promise. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. And, and uh, well, uh, um, could I ask a favor of you? You had these two uh, things. Can you grab these real quick and walk them by the council and just uh, kind of uh, walk them by? And while you're doing so, uh, I'm going to call on Council Member Duclo, who's got something to say. I just want to say that we, uh, I have a house out in Ocean Shores on, on Duck Lake. And they had the same problem with that. Um, if you took your boat or your canoe or whatever and went in the water when you came out, it was covered with green algae. The city owns the lakes out there and the waterways, and the city did elect to go to natural resources and get permission to put an antitoxin in there. Right. And it cleared it up beautifully. Yeah. And now they're doing it again. It's been about four or five years since they did it the last time, and they're doing it again just to keep it under control. And it's a beautiful lake. There, there's 23 miles of, of lake and waterways out there, and they're gorgeous. Yeah. But one boat can bring one little strand of that in and infect the whole lake because it grows like crazy. Right. So 
I don't know that the city, that we have any authority over a private lake, but if there's anything that we can try to do to help, I would really urge it. And uh, let's wait for a minute just for, Bob. Um, so we're, we're exploring several different options. We did take another look at it, but um, Brian, uh, our chief of staff, in, in, uh, do you have anything to add in regard to Mr. Woolley's comments? I know that we, we follow this ex incredibly closely. We've been in contact with uh, Department of Health, and, uh, but go ahead, Brian. Well, let's say that you know, the city has played an active role in trying to address this issue of Twin Lakes and the health of those lakes for, and, and the Joe's Creek watershed for, uh, for years and have actually uh, obtained state funding to treat the private lake, which is almost unheard of, and that was done by our staff uh, to be able to do it. However, the golf club uh, did not give permission for that to occur. Um, we are in the midst of a study that has taken, that is in process uh, to determine uh, the nutrient study of what's causing uh, this and, and to have some clear uh, definitive issues. Uh, while Mr. Woolley has talked about the fact, uh, an assumptive statement that the water is toxic, um, that is in dispute, uh, both from the Department of Ecology, uh, by the testing agencies, and uh, given the conditions that can take place at the lake, the toxicity can change. Sometimes it is toxic, sometimes it's not. <clears throat> so what I will say is that we have been in uh, communication with uh, the law firm that represents the golf club. Uh, as a city, we've taken a position to say the condition, uh, either how it looks, but also the, the inaction that's taken place to some extent is unacceptable, and that there needs to be efforts to take preventative steps, but also be in a position to treat the lake when an algae bloom uh, takes place. Um, this, uh, there is an, a lawsuit that's been filed by um, the lake, several uh, lake residents. Uh, that does change the dynamic of the actions uh, and, and the city is not interested in being a party to that lawsuit. Uh, that is a lawsuit between the residents around the area and the golf club, and that needs to take place to resolve itself. What I have been informed is that the Twin Lakes Golf and Country Club has obtained a permit to treat uh, Lake Gene, and that permit was obtained from the Department of Ecology. Uh, for that treatment to occur, certain conditions have to be in place and that would uh, indicate that there's some level of toxicity or, toxicity or that the bloom takes place. And they are in a position to treat the lake in the event that that occurs. We've heard from residents that, that they would like to see preventative steps taken that are approved by the Department of Ecology as opposed to waiting for a bloom to take place. And that effort on the part of the city to continue to uh, push that issue um, is, is very much in play. The ordinance that Mr. Woolley is proposing for the council to enact, um, there are consequences and unintended consequences to make a change in the manner th of that what is being suggested. However, there may be options within our own code currently that if this suit is not resolved and if the conditions continue to worsen, that as a staff and, as, and under the direction of the mayor, that we uh, may take action uh, against the club uh, for that condition to, to deteriorate. But again, there is science involved in this. There's uh, different state agencies that are involved in this and we are in communication with them on a consistent basis and will continue to advocate on behalf of the residents and the neighborhood about the condition <coughs> of this lake. And especially when Mr. Woolley, you know, showcases the two differences between the lakes, 
and there is dramatic differences. And it is a fact that one of those has had treatment and the other one hasn't. So we will continue to work on this case, but you know, as from a staff perspective, uh, the solution that's been put forward by Mr. Woolley is uh, in terms of creating an ordinance uh, that would have unintended consequences, that option is not something for us that we would recommend to council to pass at this time. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Wilson, for your comments. I appreciate it that this, I really do appreciate the fact that the city is working on this and trying to help these residents. Um, I can also say that before the lake was treated out in Ocean Shores, I un unfortunately flipped my canoe and went in and came out with a fantastic eye infection. So it may be okay to drink, but it's not okay to get in your eyes. That stuff does cause some problems. So anything we can do to try to help these folks, I would encourage us to. And we're watching it very closely. And, and I think that we're, you know, I think we're gonna very quickly uh, could get to a situation in which we may just have to act unilaterally um, with our existing statutes. And so that's one of the things we want to do, and I think that, that uh, Brian made reference to is when you pass an ordinance, it right. has uniform effect, and we've right. got to make sure that we don't find ourselves uh, 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 forcing uh, other uh, lake owners or even the city to pay sums that they not, may not be able to or want to. No, I understand the yeah. difficulties yeah. here, but I really appreciate the city really trying to support these people because I think people have a right to live by clean water. Agreed. Especially if they have children around them. Agreed. Agreed. And animals. Yes. Uh, that's that's the key thing. I know you're an animal lover, as we all are. Uh, Councilmember Moore. Yeah, and, and certainly uh, I know that when I took the tour, I was quite disgusted at the fact that I saw a baby duckling it, right in the midst of that. So I appreciate you stating that. And, 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 and Brian, a great update. I appreciate that. I think it really answered a lot of my questions that were coming up in my mind. And I think the, the biggest thing that I really appreciate the most is the fact that for the first time, I'm starting to hear a solution, which is we may have to take steps of our own unilaterally. And of course, naturally, I'm curious to what is that? Uh, but uh, we can discuss that later or whenever it's appropriate. But uh, you know, at this time, it's, it's, I understand there's legal issues going on. Uh, and, but I just, uh, you know, one of my former teachers, Mary Jo Reinsma, who lives right on Lake Jeans, you know, has talked about how everybody's pointing the fingers. And that does not solve the issues. That's why people don't like government in some cases. So we need to provide for a solution and take care of it to make sure that everybody has a healthy place to live at. Because this is completely inexcusable, in it, my opinion. Thank you. It's rooted in nuisance, our nuisance statutes. Uh, Council Member Maloney. Thank you. And um, I know this is not necessarily the time for brainstorming, but I just had yeah. a thought. Yeah. And I'm wondering if it's possible for the city to request, at the very least, can you not hear me? OK. Um, request that uh, the uh, the uh, Twin Lakes put up some sort of fencing around it because I remember last time you came, Bob, you mentioned that there were some young girls or young young kids in there, and when Deanie mentions her eye infection and so forth, it, I'm wondering if there's something that we could do at least in that regard in the interim. So um, yeah, essentially, yeah, absolutely rooted rooted essentially in a theory of attractive nuisance that you've got this body of water and people may not with those sprinklers or other waters, either with children, animals, uh, those kinds of things. Council Member Sepha Dawson? Yeah, um, and also um, I and a couple of council members did tour, um, go visit, and one thing that I have not heard yet is about the smell that happens occasionally. So even that is, uh, I, I, can, I can imagine that being annoying and frustrating to the residents who do live around the lake. So just to add that piece also. All right, thank you. Uh, council Member um, Kopeng. I just want to say how much I appreciate the engagement of the community in a very respectful way to work with uh, the council and the mayor to come to a solution. And I know we had a, we had a large contingent of the lake at the, uh, at the public safety committee meeting uh, we had last week and um, very respectful, um, I think, uh, but also very passionate about trying to find a solution. And, you know, I just, I keep coming back to the fact that we really have two lakes that have the same water source and one lake is clean and one lake is not. And uh, you know, the difference is proactive, preventative treatment in one lake and reactive treatment in the other. So we basically have a problem that we've seen coming that's come year after year. And uh, I know that as a council member, I would really like to see us 
um, be part of a solution that creates a preventative solution so the lake does not have to reach a level of toxicity in future years. So anyway, that's certainly my focus. Councilmember Moore. Uh, and Mr. Mayor, thank you for the conversations here, uh, especially after a public comment. Uh, the question I have for Brian is, um, or the request I have for Brian rather is, you know, let's communicate with the people around Lake James, and I'm sure we're doing that already, but let's just keep them in touch so that they know what's going on, because that was obviously one of the concerns that we heard uh, a couple weeks ago. And I'm sure that's that's happening, but I just want to make sure it's clear. So Point well taken, Councilmember Moore. Deputy Mayor Burbridge. Thank you. Um, I appreciate your coming before us this evening again. And you've been very diligent about um, trying to work toward a solution. And I've, I'm confident that our staff have been, as well, very diligent about um, trying to determine how there can be a, a solution that can satisfy all the parties involved. I have the impression that um, there, that the, perhaps the club is 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 hoping to come to a solution too. I know that they they would like to see the situa situation resolved, but I have the impression that perhaps they're, um, for whatever reason, not in as much a, of a hurry as the folks who live on the lake and experience it every day, and I I'm not clear as to why there is that willingness to to take a longer time and I'd be very interested in <coughs> down the road we can we can be provided with more information to answer that question. Brian. So that's been part of the challenge is, is why is this happening you know why is this communication and relationship breakdown between the club and the residents and the circumstance and uh, I don't have an answer for that um, other than the fact that we are continuing to, um, you know, to, to try and find a solution and to, you know, deal with all parties. We've also reached out in public and in, in private sessions to meet with residents that we will, as a city, we will meet with residents and talk to them. Um, I, as Mr. Woolley's invitation, which is appreciated to have a discussion on National Night Out, that's probably not the best time to do it. Uh, I would suggest that we have a meeting uh, for residents, uh, and I've made that offer several times for us and our staff to come out and say, here's where we are, here's where we, what we've done, and here's where we're going. To have it on a national night out uh, is, is, I'd like to do it on a different, different date, and we've made that offer several times, and I've had some conversation with uh, council about, with different residents to make that offer. So that offer stands. Um, and uh, again, uh, this issue of, I want to just address the toxicity, that is of issue, you know, and, and different organizations are saying, yes, it is. Others are saying, no, it isn't. So that's part of the testing and the issue. And what happens is it's a dynamic issue. Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. And that's true with all the bodies of water that, that we have, you know, some control or jurisdiction on. So. It sometimes is a moving target, but uh, as Councilmember Copang said, the issue of you know, one lake that isn't and one that is, and there's preventative steps that are taken, and as a city and as a staff and under the direction of the mayor, we're doing everything we can to put pressure on the golf club and their representation to get this thing resolved, and we'll continue to do that. Okay. Excuse me, may I ask um, a follow-up? What does the golf club say? What is the problem? Well, they're not convinced, number one, they're not convinced <clears throat> that their concern is initially that one treatment may, you know, that uh, the treatment may work for a week or two and then it's going to come back. No, the treatment will work, but you will have to do it a couple of times and then yeah. maybe every three or four or five years you'll have to do it again. They're going to do it this year out in, in Ocean Shores. Yeah. Now, the city is paying for that because the city owns the waterways, but this is, this is private. But at some point in time, we, you've, got to, you've got to stop it. Before, before it becomes completely just filled with those weeds. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mayor, thank you very much. I got, yeah. I got an agenda profile tonight. That was not my intent. But I do appreciate and I apologize to the audience for this subject consuming as much time as it did. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Um, Councilmember Honda. 
Thank you. This is a really complex issue that's not going to be solved by the seven of us here, excuse me, the eight of us here. Uh, this afternoon, we received an email from the tax assessor's office that the residents around the lake, their tax assessment will be um, $24,000 less than it was. So I think it becomes even more complex because now we've included another um, body that needs to be worked with. So if the lake is non-toxic, then the tax assessor needs to be called into this again. So it's becoming more complex and I, it's certainly not gonna be solved. Um, and, yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, thank you. Thank you, Bob. All right, uh, Rose Rattaray. Hi, everybody. If I run out of time, I'm going to use Billy Paddock's time. So I have six minutes. Okay, I'm here. I was hoping Chief Andy would be here because I'm here to thank the police department. We in Federal Way have a great police department. We have Deputy Neal, stand up, Chief, the Deputy Chief, stand up. Okay, and we have Deputy Chief Sumner, stand up. I'm going to tell you, these are great people. The, the entire department is very well run. They're professional. I'm in the parks a lot. I'm in Celebration Park, and I'm in Steel Lake, and they're by myself. I'm from New York, so I'm not used to parks by myself. I'm in there a lot. The policemen come by. They're in their cars. They wave. They talk. If there's a problem, they get out of their cars. They come over to check on things. They are wonderful. I can't say enough good things. Now let me tell you what happened. Okay. Oh, I did get a ticket three years ago, my first ticket in 45 years, because I was going a little bit fast, just a little bit fast. The cop was so nice. He came over and told me what to say in court and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so it worked out well. Let me tell you what happened. Last Tuesday, I'm going into Seattle. I left my car in the transit center, and somebody stole it, stole my car. So I came back. My car was gone, so I said, don't panic, don't fall out. There was an author, there was a guy there named Hanson, H-A-N-S-O-N. -S Pay attention, there's a difference. Okay. Went with me, we walked throughout the entire garage, no car. So I'm panicking, my car is gone, what am I gonna do? So the guy, he did a report. He said, you have to call the police. So, oh my God, so I called the police and Officer Hanson, H-A-N-S-E-N. -S do any of you know him? Okay, his um, S, S. Hansen? I think it's S. Hansen. Okay, I don't know. Okay, he showed up. So he got there and he said, Hi, I know you. I said, Yes, I know you also. And he asked about my friend. He said, We're going to take a report for your car. So I said, I'm trying not to cry, trying not to get hysterical. My car is gone. You know what that means. So he says, Okay, come out. And he has a car. And he says, You have to get in the police car. I said, I can't get in the police car. What are people going to think? Someone's going to see me in a police car? I said, I can't do that. He said, well, sit in the back. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Rose. Sit in the back. And he said, I'll leave the door open. So he left the door open because I didn't want people to see me in the police car. He made a report and he said, you're going to get your car back. I'm trying not to faint. I said, how do you know that? He says, they have a special car or something, a computer mm -hmm. that goes around and they can spot stolen cars. He said to me, someone's going to find, they're going to leave your car a few blocks away. So I said, yeah. And so I'm trying to be politically correct. Go ahead and finish. Robert. And I said, is it okay if I hug you? So he said, yeah, I can hug him because you have to be politically correct. It's not against the law. So I hugged him. Okay, I'm not finished. Guess what? 3.30 in the morning, my phone rings. And the policewoman says, we found your car. And I said, you found my car? It's impossible. Where was it? And she says, it's in the garage. I said, what garage? I looked in the entire garage. So I said, I'm going to come get it right away. I hung up the phone, and then it occurred to me, I don't have a car. How am I going to get my car? I don't have a car. So I called her back, and I said, I'm so sorry. What am I going to do? Are you going to have to tow my car? She says, just a minute. I'll have a policeman call you. Policeman called me. It was um, Jay Buster. Do you know him? I think it's Jay Buster. OK, he called me. He says, Rose. I'll come get you. I said, oh my God, I can't believe it. So I said, listen, don't put the lights on and stuff. And stuff. <laughs> you know, because people are going to think, you know what I mean? He came, he didn't have the lights on and stuff. And once again, the front of the car has a lot of stuff. 
So I said, okay, nobody's out. It's four in the morning. I'll get in the back. No one will see me. Then it occurred to me, the only people out four in the morning are low-life criminals. So if they see me, what are they doing out at four in the morning? Am I right? I get in the car. He drives me to the garage. And I say, that's not where my car was. And I said to him, I have proof that that man went with me and my car wasn't there. This nice buster officer, he says, get in the car, make sure everything is okay. And I get in and all the papers in the car, the, um, you know those registration and stuff? It's on the floor. The seat is pushed back. There's paper wrapped. There's a lot of stuff in there. He says to me, start the car and make sure it starts. So I got in and I start the car. I wanted to hug him, but it was four in the morning. I figured, don't hug him. I thanked him. So I'm here to tell you, people, citizens, you have to be more appreciative of the police. If you get a chance, you have to show them some love, show them respect, show them that they have our support. There are things happening. Don't always listen to the media. We have a great police department here in Federal Way. I'm telling you, they're fabulous. And I really think all citizens, council members, all of this, mayor, you need to give Officer Buster and Officer Hansen, you need to give them a commendation, recommendation. You need to give them a plaque. You need to give them a, a day of appreciation. You need to give them a merit raise. Those policemen, <laughs> am I right? Am I right? Don't they deserve it? Those policemen were fabulous. Chief Andy's fabulous, but the Officer Neal and Officer Sumner, they're also great. Thank you, people. Thank you, Rose. We do have a great police department. We're very thankful for all they do, and it's, it's a great end to that story. So, did the, I assume the car started and everything was fine? Everything was fine, no problem at all. Very good. Very good, all right. <laughs> And uh, Chief Neal, can you t talk a little bit about, uh, we, we did, when I, uh, right when I took office, we added a number of these uh, uh, scanning, uh, radar scanning. What are, what, what are the names of those units again? Uh, automatic license plate readers. And they are, we, we have three of our uh, fleet that are, uh, that, that have these on it. And li literally what they can do is drive down the road, go through parking garages, go through apartment complexes and that sort of thing and they read the plates uh, as they go by they can read up to about 60,000 plates a month and based on the information that's input into the system the data that's input into the system if there's a stolen vehicle that shows up it gives the officer an alert and then depending on the location and the circumstances the officer can recover that vehicle or the person's responsible for stealing the vehicle yeah, it's a tremendous resource, and mm. we uh, literally doubled the amount of ALPRs that we have uh, in the city. Councilmember Maloney. Thank you. I, Rose, I just want to thank you for coming out and talking about this. Um, we do have a wonderful police force, and um, all of our officers are great, and I just really appreciate that community members um, recognize that and speak out about it. So thank you. Very good. All right, uh, Billy Paddock. No, I don't. Oh, okay. All right. You had that covered. Okay, that was for insurance. All right, Betty Taylor. Come on up, Betty. Okay, all right. Um, my name is Betty Taylor. Good evening, um, citizens. Okay, so National Night Out is an annual community building campaign that promotes police partnerships and brings neighborhoods together to make our neighbors safe, our neighborhoods safe, and, and places to live safe. Okay. I can appreciate the, the many times, the many times I have sat in um, Mayor Jim Farrell's office and we, we have the same conversation. You know, it's always National Night Out. I'm just like National Night Out. And I appreciate the fact that I remember the last time I sat in his office, we were talking about National Night Out and um, it had occurred to me about the um, Town Square Park and, uh, and the reopening of Town Square Park. And I remember a conversation we talked about uh, doing something at Town Square Park on National Night Out, and, and I never got a chance to get back with you, and so I I um, I and stuff. I know that it's in a, like a couple of weeks, and so um, 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 I being as the you know the it, my idea is being as it's a new new Town Square Park opening, um, it'd be a good idea to to have something at the new Town Square Park. Just even if it's little, and maybe even next year go bigger, and the next year go bigger, but always do something at at uh, the Town Square Park. 
Um, I know that in times past, I know that Target has done something at their store. I, I don't know what they did last year, but I don't think it was big. But I would like to see something big at the new Town Square Park. And um, I would like everybody to put it on their hearts and everybody to put it on their minds because it, it, National Night Out is really important to me. And I know it's important to the community um, um, and it's uh, important to the city council as well as the, 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 um, the community. And, and since the park is so big, it just opened up. And, and it's a good idea to just have something there. So I never got back with you and you never got back with me. So. Well, I think the, the challenge is because of the more than 30 locations and all of the officers that we have <coughs> going out to all of those locations, you know, it's, it, there are different models for National Night Out. One is a centralized location where the community comes to gather, and the other is a decentralized where it's kind of neighborhood by neighborhood. And uh, as you can see, we had the grand opening of the park. There's been a lot going on in the past couple of weeks, but we just had the grand opening. I'll, I'll talk with the, uh, with the police again, but I think the challenge is there's only a, so many people involved in National Night Out in regard to the officers, and, you know, we've, we've been following the model of decentralization. In fact, it was myself, you, and the chief of police, I think it was last year. Right. And we went right. to, I think, five or six different locations yeah. last yep, year. We did, yeah. And because I wanted you to get a sense of, of, of where we're at. So I, uh, I we'll, we'll uh, you know, we'll consider that. I think it's just a matter of there's only, with crime prevention folks and, and police officers, it is important that those folks get out, that the representatives of the city and the police department get out to as many of the 30 locations as possible. Right, my thing was to utilize the location because it's, it's a new identity and it's in the heart of the city. And so that was my, my vision and my, right. like to utilize it while it's there. Right, okay, well thank you, Betty. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, uh, now we're uh, moving on to the uh, consent agenda. These items have gone through committee and uh, uh, they can be passed all at once, and I'll ask after I read through them, I'll ask whether the council would like to pull an item for uh, separate and individual consideration by the council. <clears throat> so, uh, letter A, minutes from the July 5th, 2016 regular and special meetings. Item B, Sacagawea Middle School Safe Routes to Schools Bid Award. Item C, Submittal of Transportation Grant Applications. Item D, Laser Technology Incorporated True Speed Mapping Kit Crime Scene Documentation and Collision Reconstruction Equipment Purchase and Replacement Reserve Fund. Item E, Reallocation of Red Light Traffic Safety Cameras to School Zone Traffic Safety Cameras. Item F, Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Grant JAG Program for Fiscal Year 2016. Item G, CHI Franciscan <coughs> Health Violence Prevention Initiative Youth Safety Mini Grant. Item H, King County Registered Sex Offender Cost Reimbursement Agreement. Council, those are the items uh, on the consent agenda. Are there, is there a council member who would like to pull an individual, uh, an item for individual consideration? All right, hearing no motion, Deputy Mayor, do, do you have a motion? I do, thank you. I move approval of items A through H on the consent agenda. Second. Second. It's been moved and multiply seconded. <laughs> uh, is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Matter passes unanimously. All right, now uh, the public hearing. I'll go ahead and open the, uh, the hearing. Uh, this is abatement cost recovery in regard to the Garner property. First, we'll have a staff report from Scott Sproul, our interim community development director. Next, we'll have citizen comment. And uh, after that, we'll have uh, council questions discussion. Scott. Good evening, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Council. I'll present to you. This is the final step in the abatement process for the Garner property. I'm here tonight to, to to report on the cost incurred to the city staff from the abatement from three of the pro uh, properties uh, from Mr. Garner. I recommend an assessment against each of the properties to ensure payment through the property tax system. I'll give you some background here. This has been, uh, Garner's been an ongoing nuisance for many years. Mr. Garner's properties have a long history of documented repeated code violations dating back to the, to the 1990s. The complaints and violations have included ex exterior junk, storage of building materials, construction of vehicles, construction vehicles, equipment, generators, motors, scrap metal. And you can see some of these in some of the slides here. So we in in most in the most recent case in 2014, a notice of violation in order to correct. 
was filed on November 19, 2014 for, the, for three properties that Mr. Gardner. Mr. Gardner appealed to the hearing examiner after, and after holding the hearing, the hearing examiner upheld the violations on the property dated March 31, 2015, upholding the city's complaint with the public nuisance. The hearing examiner determined that Gardner's appeal to be frivolous and penalized Mr. Gardner $12,800. Under a reasonable payment plan, the city staff could have forgave $9,800 and could have been waived if Mr. Gardner corrected the violation. He chose not to. Mr. Gardner again filed an appeal of the hearing examiner's decision in King County Superior Court on July 7, 2015. Superior Court granted the city's motion to dismiss and upheld the, the, the hearing examiner's decision. Staff moved forward with abatement on August, August 17, 2015. We, we got cost sentiments from the lo, uh, local contractor, special interest towing, and they removed all the vehicles, junk, and debris off the property. In addition to those costs incurred by special interest towing and the hearing examiner and staff, the total the whole, to the the incurred cost is $38,878.21. Scott, do you have any other slides on the? I don't. I just got the ones okay. from the, the property that shows all the vehicles here. Okay. And you know, there's tanks in the bushes and, and just a shot of just the whole place littered with multiple vehicles. I okay. just grabbed a few of them. They're all, you know, kind of all clustered in there. And there's some stuff that, you know, we, they were taken off from a distance, but there's stuff buried all the way deep through the property there. You know, staff was that day that we were there. It was an eight-hour day. No, actually, even longer. I think we spent ten hours there just to, to remove all the stuff and pull the stuff even out of the brush. You know, the grass was four or five, six feet tall, and we ran into all kinds of debris that there. And they just, the tow company just, you know, latched onto stuff and kept dragging stuff out and put it in the process. So, Scott, do you have an amount of what the cost would be? Do you have an amount for what the cost would be? Okay, it's broken down. So special and towing's bill was seventeen thousand eight hundred and twenty-five dollars, and their scrap value after stuff was salvaged. That's theirs. Um, the hearing examiner's, you know, penalty was twelve thousand dollars eight hundred, and then the staff's, because we can go ahead and go back and charge back for that, was eight thousand two hundred fifty-two dollars and eighty-four cents. You know, and that includes you know police officer standby time, you know, administration time, code and officer times that were all there. I just want to make sure we're on the same page when I make the motion yeah if, right. so if you're looking at the staff report page two you know down at the bottom it talks about storage fees less scrap value and then the final bill for special instance towing mr garner did retrieve one trailer back and so he did pay that okay but scott do you have any more information um you know we just recommend that that the charges incurred are just and reasonable and should not be reduced furthermore the staff recommends the city council should authorize these costs and assess a lien against the property okay i just want to confirm the amount of thirty eight thousand eight hundred seventy eight dollars and twenty one cents correct and that's uh, that's that's for three properties you know and and, and exhibits a it shows that if you look at exhibit a page four at the top there it breaks it down on the three on the three properties so you can see that's so the property one cost, two cost, three cost, and so there's different. There was different vehicles and debris on each of the properties. So, okay, uh, uh, let's pause just for a moment. Ryan, do you have anything to add? Is this is a essentially a legal action? Anything to add in regard to this process? Just I, I think Mr. Sproul stated this is the last part of of the process. This is just to basically authorize recovery. So we can't place a lien on these properties without authorization from council. Um, so that is the point of, of, of us coming here today. Um, the $38,000 number will be, of course, split up according to the exhibit that Mr. Sproul has provided. So not each property will get a, pr a percentage of that total. Okay. Oh, oh, there you go. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, yeah. Thomas helped me out here. So, yeah. Yeah. There we go. It's a breakdown. Okay. So twenty-one thousand six uh, six hundred some change, eleven thousand six hundred eighty-nine and five thousand five hundred fifty. Okay, okay, uh, Councilmember Moore. Yeah, a question for for the attorney, and that's uh, clearly this has been an ongoing issue for perhaps years. 
uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, if, if this thing happens all over again, which has been the trend, what's the next steps? I mean, what's, uh, I mean, obviously this concerns a lot of neighbors. Uh, it drives property values down. Uh, and so I'm just wondering what's next? Well, we actually took a pretty firm hand against Mr. Garner this time around. Um, there were criminal charges associated with this. Um, he was put on probation as in a whole other proceeding in criminal court as a misdemeanor charge for, for public nuisance. Um, as far as addressing the property goes, there's really nothing to be done except for to repeatedly address the nuisance. So as it cr crops up again, we have to jump on it as quickly as we notice it. Okay. Council, any other questions about this? Thank you, Scott. You may want to stay close uh, as we have, uh, we've got citizen comment and then we've got council questions and discussions. Um, all right, citizen comment. Was there anybody that would like to address this issue? Uh, Rose, come on up. Yeah, Ro Rose, come on up. Rose, right away. Rose, can you approach the microphone so people that are watching at home okay, can I'm hear I'm looking you? at the last paragraph. He's asking you now for authorization to get a tax lien, yeah. which means we'll recoup the $38,000. Yeah. So if they have to sell the property or something like that, we're not going to be stuck with this $38,000, are we? Not until the property is sold or transferred. Yeah, it comes out of the sale. Oh, okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah, whenever that would occur. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anybody else who'd like to address? I would like to comment that uh, uh, Mr. Garner, uh, we made sure that, right, uh, that, Mr., uh, that Mr. Garner did uh, uh, submit something in writing uh, to the council. Did everybody receive that via email today? Yeah. Mr. Garner, would you like to address the council? Well, please come on up, sir. Mr. Mayor and council members, uh, it's a privilege to be here tonight. I'm a old Texas farm boy, and I feel like I'm in tall cotton right now. Um, when I graduated out of high school, I was going into the ministry, and the draft board decided that they didn't want me to go in the ministry. They wanted me to go to uh, Korea and kill people, mm -hmm. and I decided that wasn't my thing. So I joined up to the Air Force instead. So I flew the Boeing airplanes for about 35 years, great airplanes. I am uh, take care of people, so I'm a, a one that likes to take the uh, friendship thing. Um, I look at the city council as the protectors of the city, and I look at myself as the protector of the individuals that live in the city. I've tried that since uh, I first moved here. I think it was like 1969. So I uh, precede the, the city by quite a few years. So I'm familiar with just about every place in here. Um, <clears throat> I was a general contractor and um, on my spare time. And I was moving airport houses in from the airport when they were um, uh, being moved down here to get more space at the airport and they were being set up for low-cost housing uh, for individuals because I didn't need the money. So I thought, well, that'd be a good thing for me to do in my spare time. Um, my uh, construction company, myself and my son, <coughs> uh, we did 10% uh, of our business was always free gratis to people in need. So I'm kind of familiar with how things go together. I had moved one house in from um, the airport and put it up, and uh, it's still functional, but not occupied. <coughs> the second house was uh, built or set up uh, between Mirror Lake and Fisher's Pond. Now, people aren't aware of the fact that those two lakes sit right above the aquifers that supply the water to the city of Federal Way. Um, w I was uh, one of the people that got sewers in that comes all the way up to where my property was. <laughs> but right out in the middle of the street, that would be on 6th Avenue Southwest, uh, right by where the last uh, sewer main ends, <clears throat> um, there was a telephone or a power pole and I couldn't get power to my property because the uh, then Puget Power 
uh, said that if the, anybody hit that post, that they would be responsible. So I had no electricity in the house sat there for years. Uh, when the uh, 1989, the uh, state of Washington by its legislature passed a um, statute that was uh, RCW 1927-180, and it specifically applied to move uh, ha uh, properties for low income uh, type of operation, which that house qual qualified for. Uh, that was in 89. In 1990, when the city became a incorporated, um, the city looked at it and they said, well, that house is not being used and it's sitting there deteriorating. <clears throat> so you have to bring that into compliance with a then federal way code, the city code, it's called then. <clears throat> so that's where all this started. And uh, of course, being a contractor, I knew that that house to come to then city code would have to be destroyed to bring it back up into code. But as it sat, it was within code uh, by the RCW. But the city decided that no, that wasn't good enough. <clears throat> so they issued me a, a notice of violation in order to correct. And so we went to the hearing examiner, one of the first ones there in the city, and he looked at the problem and he said, you just work it out with the city and just, you know, work it out. We, we got to do something here. So um, we had no choice. The city sat down and they wrote out a, um, a um, compliance order, which was bring it up to code or not. My choice was I can't bring it up to code. So it sat there and then a few years later uh, they said he issued me another citation and the same same situation and I the code has even increased in intensity by then so I had no choice just leave it there. <laughs> so the city decided that they wanted that house removed, so the assistant city, wasn't a mayor back in then, I'll have to look on that, but the assistant uh, senior supervisor, decided that he had found a way to get rid of the, the building. Um, the way that it went about was under the Puget Sound Clean Air Agency, only the owner of the property, any property, only the owner can order an, uh, um, asbestos abatement uh, uh, survey because every building that has a uh, r r not or even a rather large I think it's like 300 square feet roof line <coughs> has to have a uh, asbestos survey so the city decided that they were the owner and if you go back and look at the contract between the city of Federal Way and Hoffman Construction, <coughs> you will find out that uh, in that contract, the, the administrator said that the city was the owner or the city, and they applied for the uh, asbestos survey. They hired a survey a company that was in uh, the city and they sent out a inspector, and he didn't know where to look for the, the asbestos. It was a three-story, two-story building, quite tall, 3,000 square foot. And he didn't want to get up on the roof, so he didn't look down into the chimney. Well, I had built that chimney from the bottom up to where the existing uh, chimney was when it was moved from the airport. 
and I could look up there and I could see the asbestos because back in those days when that house was built, it was in 1945, what they use when they use a sandstone, which is very heat sensitive, and you put heat on it, it'll crack. And that's what they built the fireplace with. Let me interrupt just for a moment. My understanding is that we're talking about uh, uh, vehicles, trailers, mm -hmm. other things on your property, not in, not in regard to, uh, uh, you know, building codes or, or anything like that. Um, what, isn't that what we're here for, about the removal of cars and trucks and trailers from your property? Uh, no, I don't believe that is correct, sir. <clears throat> what we're here is the citation of that um, notice and violation to correct. Had four properties on it. The property we're talking about was one of them. You will not find it anywhere up there. Well, that, this is what we're talking about here. We're talking about, this has been, Mr. Garner, this has been going on literally for over a decade in which there have been cars and trucks and trailers that have been on the property. Not on that property. Well, no. in, uh, on the property uh, along Marine View Drive. This is what we're talking about. So I guess my, my question is, what that, uh, Scott, am I, am I correct? Yes, the, yes, the, the addresses are 29811 Marine View Drive and then also 1403. So we're not talking about me. we're not talking about anything by Mirror Lake. We're not. So I, I guess the, the council is being asked to decide the the, the hearing examiner uh, imposed or sustained the allegations. The superior court um, uh, heard your appeal and dismissed it. We're here for the express purpose of whether the city council will direct city staff to put a lien on your property to recoup the monies that we have expended to clean up this property. Do you have anything to say about that? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. The, the properties that he showed on the, ch on the uh, chart up there wasn't on my property. That's not my property. <clears throat> well, that's been adjudicated. So the, 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 that's been adjudicated. We're not here to decide the merits of this. We're here to decide right now, and what the council will be voting on, is whether we put a lien on your property to recoup the monies that we've expended. Do you have any comment on that? But on my property? Yes, Mr. Garner. That's property. not my property. Okay, well, that, did you address that with the hearing examiner in the Superior Court? Um, I tried to. Yes, I tried to. Okay, why? Well, but I believe, but go ahead, sir. wait a minute, sir. Yes. But the way the hearing examiner conducted the hearing and everything else, and the instructions that, uh, at the very end of his, his findings said that this is appealable to the um, uh, Superior Court, right, under the um, RCW 50, what is it, 3670C. But the statute says that they can't, that cannot be brought before the uh, Superior Court because it's more, the, more than one uh, property. And as statute, if you read my re, uh, report to you, <laughs> the, the statute says it can only use a single property, <laughs> and uh, therefore, when I file the appeal, I didn't file the appeal under the 3670C. I filed it differently because you can't do it that way. So that's how the, the, the uh, court then decided, okay, well, <laughs> It is so complicated that on a um, uh, 30, uh, Growth Management Act 3670 <coughs> uh, is so complicated that you have to have all kinds of um, a process, um, uh, just like anybody building something with a big, uh, big construction project. It would cost you probably a hundred thousand dollars just to do the paperwork on it. <laughs> so uh, that's where it went. But it is still active, even because I then filed after the uh, court uh, uh, ruled against me. I filed a motion for reconsideration, and that is still active in the court right now. So the case isn't even solved. 
Okay. Uh, <coughs> hold on just for a moment, Mr. Garner. Ryan? Uh, there is no pending case before the Superior Court. It was dismissed with prejudice. I believe that Mr. Garner filed a subsequent motion to reconsider that has been ignored by the court. So the case is final. There, the entire appeal of this, this case has been adjudicated. Okay. So Mr. Garner, um, is, there any, is there anything else you'd like to say? I didn't, I didn't hear that. Is there anything else you'd like to say, sir? Uh, <clears throat> the, um, the judge in the criminal case, because it was on the same properties, and they were going simultaneously, going, uh, transpiring, <clears throat> the judge ruled that those were uh, junk vehicles. His decision on the, whole, on the whole operation was that they were parked illegally on a lot that didn't belong to me. So if I didn't own the lot, and I don't own the lot, how can you even assess me? Okay, thank you, Mr. Garner, and, okay. and uh, for, we'll take it from here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Maloney. Thank you. Um, I know that it's been adjudicated. I know it's final, but my question is about Mr. Garner's statement that he doesn't own that lot. Um, when we put the lien on the property, it will just go to the property owner, right? I mean, the lien is against the property that, and that, the responsible person. The hearing, I'm sorry. The, that's okay, the responsible yes. person. So the hearing examiner ruled that Mr. Garner was responsible for the condition of these properties. And we can assess either against the property owner or the responsible party. It's my understanding okay. that um, one of the parcels may have been transferred to a trust for Mr. Garner's son, either contemporaneously with this action or after the hearing examiner heard the case. But that's not really relevant to the question at hand today, which is, mm -hmm. are these numbers accurate representations of what we paid, and whether or not we should, um, if it's fair, to impose mm -hmm. a lien? Okay. Th these are costs imposed by the city to clean the property. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I, I would note that this has been going on for well over a decade, and I, you know, I think we, many of us have known people al along uh, this area that have been dealing with this for quite some time. So, Mr. Garner, thank you very much for coming. Um, all right, uh, council, any questions or further discussion? Okay, um, council member Duclo, do you have a motion? Yes, I move to confirm the amount of $38,878.21 against Mr. Charles Garner and to authorize staff to record liens on each land parcel as recommended in the staff report. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, uh, is there any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right, matter passes unanimously. Uh, Councilmember Duplo, do you have a motion to close? Yes, I move to close the public hearing. I'll second. There's, there's been a motion, a second to close the public hearing. Is there any discussion on that? All right, uh, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, the matter, uh, this matter is closed. Thank you, Mr. Garner, for coming. All right, uh, item seven, ordinances. <clears throat> this is um, uh, first reading of uh, uh, Council Bill 709, amending Title 19, Federal Revised Code, FWRC, Impact Fee Collection Deferral Program. First, we'll have a staff report from Jim Harris. Then the city clerk will read the ordinance title. Um, and then uh, we'll have, we'll seek a motion. Uh, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good evening, City Council. I will give you a, uh, a, a very quick uh, PowerPoint on this. Um, again, it's called the Zoning and Development Code Impact Fee Payment Deferral Program. And this was presented to the Land Use and Transportation Committee last week. Um, policy question, should the Federal Way Code be amended to implement an impact fee collection deferral system? And the answer, part of the answer to that is why should we amend the code? Because the this, this state of Washington has told all the cities in the state that they need to implement a, a impact fee deferral collection system. And the deadline for adoption of those local regulations is coming up quick, September 1, 2016. So this is applicable to school impact, school impact fees as well as transportation impact fees that the city collects. And a quick description of the new law is that cities must adopt a, a system to allow a deferred collection of impact fees that a developer may opt to choose into that deferral system. 
and pay rather than paying impact fees at the point when building permits for new single family residences. Typic typically the payment occurs at the time the city issues a building permit. This would allow a potential deferral out to final inspection. And so quickly the current practice we we're kind of all the city's kind of all over the board right now on, on how we do these. The current practice for the school impact fee collection is those impact fees for the schools are required to be paid at the time of single family permit issuance. There's no alternative to that. And for transportation impact fee collection, um, kind of what we call the de default is to pay those again at the time the permit for a new single family residence is, is, is issued. However, with new subdivisions, the default is earlier than that and that those payments for transportation impact fees occur at the time of final plat, which the council's involved with um, sometimes. However, the city does currently allow deferral of those new lots and new plats to be deferred out further to the point of closing of the sale of a new single family house. So the policy objectives, obviously to implement the state law provisions, and from a staff perspective and administrative perspective, we're trying to get some consistency on, on how to collect the, both the default as well as the deferred times. So the recommendation is to implement a default collection point for school and transportation impact fees at the time that permit is for a single family residence is issued. And then the deferral point would be at the time of final building inspection approval for those. Or, that time or at 18 months, whichever occurs faster and your typical single family residences are built sooner than 18 months. So this gives you just a little quick snapshot in the, the red stars here in the, in the second line are in regard to school impact fees. The, the blue star above shows how we currently um, collect those impact fees when the permit's issued with the proposed being the default point, again, staying consistent with that but then allowing the state mandated deferral out to that point of final permit inspection. The transportation, like I said, we're, we're a little bit all over the board. Um, to the far left, we're here um, at final plat is the time when some of those impact fees are assessed and collected. And then currently we go out to the far right and allow deferring to a point of that point of sale of single family residences. Um, recommendation is to line those up, the default point being the building permit issuance and the deferred, the optional deferred point of the time of that final inspection approval. Some real quick nuts and bolts of the, uh, the state law, the term of deferral again is up to 18 months from the time the building permit is issued and that this is a little different than how the current practice is in, in Federal Bay Code but the amount of the deferred fee is determined by the fee in effect at the time an applicant applies for a deferral. So that would lock them in to that um, for that up to 18 months period. And another one of the pieces of the state legislation is the deferral is limited to the first 20 single family, um, single family permits per developer per year. So if, the, if someone had a 50 lot subdivision, a developer had a 50 lot subdivision, these deferrals would apply to the first 20 per, permits per year. And then a, a piece of this is to assure the, collect, the ultimate collection of these um, fees is the applicant must grant and record a lien against the property in favor of the city and or the school district. And then if that collection didn't occur, the city and school districts are authorized, the school district is authorized to institute uh, foreclosure proceedings if those fees are not paid. And then there would be a, a minor administrative um, fee with this deferral, optional deferral. So a real quick summary of the procedural. The Planning Commission did conduct a public hearing that was duly noticed through the process that's required in code. That occurred in June 15th. Um, Sally McLean from the school district did testify in, in, in support of the proposal um, that you see tonight. She was representing the school district. And then last week, the Land Use and Transportation Committee reviewed the Planning Commission recommendation and proposed ordinance. And the Land Use and Transportation Committee has recommended approval and first reading and, and enactment. And the mayor's recommendation is again to adopt the impact fee deferral collection ordinance. 
and I can answer any questions. That Council, have any. any questions? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. All right. Uh, would the city clerk please read the ordinance title? Council Bill 709, amending Title 19, Federal Way Revised Code, Impact Fee Collection Deferral Program. An ordinance of the City of Federal Way, Washington, relating to an impact fee payment deferral program, amending Federal Way Revised Code 19.91.60, 19.95.50, 19.100.60, and 19.100.70, repealing Federal Way Revised Code 19.91.065 and adding new sections to chapters 19.91, 19.95, and 19.100. All right, uh, Council Member Maloney, do you have a motion? I move to forward the proposed amendment to the August 9th, 2016 Council meeting for second reading and enactment. Second. second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Matter passes unanimously for first reading. <coughs> Council reports, let's start with Council Member Duclos. Oh, thank you very much. Again, I want to give a shout out to our staff for the uh, amazing job you've done on Town Square Park. Uh, fantastic. I did stop by, as I said earlier, the day before just to see how they were coming along and, and uh, Mr. Hutton offered me the opportunity to do the zip line, so of course I took it and it was great. It was great fun. It was wonderful. There was so I've gone back several times. Uh, that pervious pavement that we have around the park I walk every day and I try to do a mile, especially with my dog, so we zigzag a lot. But this time I happened to, the next day I stopped by the park just to see who was there. And I got out and I started walking and I did five laps, which is a mile. And it is so soft, it's almost like cushioning your feet. And, and I, I, noticed, I, I noticed the difference. And when I finished my walk, I wasn't tired. I was feeling really, really good. Hmm. And, and I walked fairly fast for somebody my age, although there were two women in front of me that just blew me out of the water, but other than that. Um, so I think, this, I think the park is beautiful. Uh, I want to thank all the council members who worked on it, some of us who worked on it for many years, <laughs> and other ones that came on towards the end, and the mayor and the staff, the parks department. You've done, a, you've done an outstanding job, and you should be very, very proud. And I especially love the signage around the park that describes what the various trees and plants and stuff are, and I absolutely adore St. Nicholas Furicus. <laughs> and I finally figured out that was Latin. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and I've gone down, as I say, I've gone down there a couple of times, and, and there's always been a lot of children. You know, they ought to have an adult night down there so that we could go play on some of those <laughs> things. They really look cool. <laughs> uh, I think, that's, I think that's the big thing that I have. And the other thing is that the next uh, meeting of the Finance, Economic Development, Regional Affairs Committee is Tuesday the 26th at 4.30 p.m. And again, everyone, stop by Town Square Park. Great. Councilmember Moore. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. I'm uh, beaming with a smile right now because this is my last meeting as an engaged man. I think next time I'm at the council meeting, I will be a married man. So uh, oh, thank you. Uh, uh, so I'm looking forward to, to my new life and, and whatnot. And um, so a few things I wanted to kind of share. Uh, uh, obviously, we've approved a new set of diversity commissioners. Uh, I had the opportunity to attend the latest diversity commission meeting uh, that was held last week on Wednesday. And I have to say that um, I am incredibly proud of all of our commissions uh, but this one, I have to say that I'm really proud of, uh, the, the Diversity Commission. Uh, uh, you know, we're living in a time where they're dealing with very complex issues, uh, and there is a lot of smartness uh, in that room. So um, I want to say thank you to, to our Diversity Commissioners that are serving, that are working. I know Trinice was here earlier, and I'm looking forward to just really learning more about that uh, environment and and seeing them really think outside the box, which I think they're well on our way of doing that. Uh, so I'm really uh, appreciative of their efforts. Um, Town Square Park, uh, you know, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing to, to once remember uh, what that land used to be and now uh, what it is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what our community is all about. We're about really moving forward, pushing barriers, and committing to the vision that uh, we have. And so I'm really excited because I know I've said to a lot of people that I've grown up here in Federal Way. A lot of us have, uh, quite frankly. We've known our community for a long time. 
and I'm really proud of Federal Way for the fact that we are finally creating a downtown uh, that's making investments in jobs, and it's making investments in the quality of life, uh, and it's bringing people together. And I think, you know, the running joke has been, as we all know, uh, is the fact that um, we don't know where our downtown is, and we don't have a sense of downtown. Uh, and so I'm really excited that we're actually doing it, we're creating it, and uh, I'm really excited about the future of, of the downtown. I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, exciting things that are planned uh, in the future, as most of us know, and uh, as some will learn as well. So, um, and I also want to uh, thank uh, Rose. Rose, you rocked it. You did an amazing job with your report. You, you've uh, really uh, empowered uh, the citizens, I think, the ones that are listening on TV, uh, and myself. Uh, and I, I was just, I, I loved your story, and I appreciate it, and, and the city of Fedaway needs to hear that story. So I would actually encourage you to write a letter to the editor, uh, you know, to share that. Uh, and just thank you for your spirit. You're just an uh, awesome individual. And, and uh, to Bob, uh, you have been, uh, you've been committed to making sure that you're advocating for the citizens and having a safe place, uh, a, a place where they can call home that's, uh, uh, where people have a quality of life. Uh, and I appreciate you doing that. And I appreciate, I, I see your heart, I see your passion. And uh, I think it's great the fact that our city, we're hearing you. And I hope you're walking away with, uh, tonight with that. That we're hearing you and there's gonna be some sort of action uh, one way or another. And uh, so, uh, I'm grateful to the mayor. I'm grateful for Brian for your report earlier. Uh, and uh, and so uh, I think with that, uh, I actually, I'm sorry, I wanted to recognize the police department as well. They've started, oh, oh great. Uh, they have started the youth academy uh, this summer, and I think it's a test trial, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it is really, uh, the, the goal of it is to team up with our youth and our police department uh, and really seeking advice from our youth. Uh, and I appreciated the briefing that we got um, uh, from Kathy Schrock uh, at our committee, because uh, it seems like the police department walked away with solid ideas from our youth. And I think it's really important that we're taking ideas straight from our youth and seeing what is doable and what can we do uh, to, uh, and, and how can we build it within our police department. So I'm grateful for you guys to, that you've reached out. I hope to see a fruition uh, come, in, uh, come to this uh, in terms of us using our youth, getting them engaged is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and I will end my report with that. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Councilmember Kopeng. I will uh, have to pile on here. There's a few things that uh, I want to talk about that uh, obviously have been mentioned by previous council members and probably mentioned again by others. But uh, as far as the Town Square Park is concerned, I just um, that was a culmination of years of effort uh, by the council, certainly, but also by the uh, the commission that uh, was was partnered with the uh, the staff in uh, in designing that park and and bringing in the equipment that uh, um, that we're enjoying today. So, again, I think that the commissions in our city are very important and serve a vital function uh, in, in helping our government, our city government, to 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 move forward in a way that represents the the will of the people. And I think that, uh, you know, in addition to the Parks Commission, um, I had the uh, chance to uh, also sit in on the uh, Diversity Commission, last Diversity Commission meeting. And what really impressed me is uh, we have a diversity of, of uh, in every aspect, and, um, and age, race, economic, I mean, there's, there's not a, uh, a, a lack of, of diversity on that commission in any way, shape, or form. And, the ability that the commissioners had to to work through um, you know some some challenging subjects and and come to consensus and be able to to meet and compromise and and, and again it's just it's a great example I think of of what our community really represents we're a very diverse community mm -hmm. and I think that uh, having a diversity commission um, that that reflects that community our community but also really shows the way of how to to uh, to work together, um, I really think it, it's a one more story about Federal Way and how Federal Way is working in so many respects. And we <laughs> don't get to hear those stories often enough because the negative stories take, take, tend to take the, uh, the headlines. But again, we have, we have people that are working together to create a great city. 
and to create a great future for all of us here in Federal Way. And I wanted to thank, uh, just uh, thank Greg Barroso and Jessica Rambis, the chair and the vice chair, for their leadership in that commi commi commission and um, for the good work they're doing. Um, and I just wanted to, again, thank the, uh, the, the the residents of Lake Lake Jean that showed up at the land use and transportation, or I'm sorry, at the uh, at the public safety committee meeting, um, just to really show us that you know there there really is an issue that we need to pay attention to, and but do it in a way that that leads to solution uh, as opposed to conflict that just continues to raise the defenses of everybody involved. We really do need to focus on solutions. And I think that's a great lesson. I think for us as a city is. How can we focus on solutions? Because there are issues that we come that that there can be conflict around, and but there's always a solution if we take enough time to find it. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilmember Hunter. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for a breakfast briefing that they held last week on the Warehouser King County Aquatic Center. We're really blessed to have that facility in our town. We're really lucky to have it in our town because it wasn't meant to be here. And we're lucky that we have Mike Dinwiddie who has been there since before it opened to manage the facility for 25 years now. And also our King County Council member, Pete Van Walkbauer, who has been very supportive of that facility. My husband and I attended a children's theater production on Saturday called the Rosebud Children's Theater Conservatory. It's directed by Holly Rose, and we attended the Secret Garden. It was a preteen group, and every year Holly um, has two performances, one's for a preteen group and one's for a teenager group. Uh, um, their next production is The Music Man, which is July 29th through August 7th, and that's the teenage group, the older group. And they are currently at Federal Way United Methodist Church and hoping to be in a theater hopefully by next summer. Holly does an amazing job with these kids. And over the last probably five years or so since she's been doing this, it's really been fun to watch these kids grow up from the preteen group to the teen group because they're becoming performers before our eyes. And and they're just really awesome. So if you have the chance to go to the Music Man, I'd encourage you to do that and to support our kids in this community. So we had Safety Day at the Farmer's Market last week, and that was with the Qantas Club, the Fire Department, the, um, fi uh, the Police Department, and Lowe's was there this year. And Lowe's had, uh, on Saturdays, Lowe's has a workshop for children and they can come in and make a project. And so they came to the farmer's market and you could hear throughout the entire market the little hammers, the little kid sized hammers are really cute, making their um, cars. And so it was really nice. And actually Nick Wilson was there working it. And um, we as the Qantas Club, we fitted 190 children in our community with bicycle helmets. Uh, free to the kids. We worked in conjunction with Harborview Hospital and Children's Hospital. They buy the helmets, they bring them to us. We pr well, we provide the money, the Qantas Club provides the money, but they bring us the helmets and help um, fit the children and then we help fit the children too. So 190 kids were fitted this summer with new helmets. And um, on Saturday at the Farmer's Market, it'll be the 12th fan walk rally, which a man lost a bet. You probably heard the story. Anyway, he's walking from Pierce County up to um, the football field, and part of the way he's going to stop here in Federal Way at the um, Farmer's Market at 11 o'clock, I believe the mayor's speaking. Mm -hmm. And he is donating part of his proceeds from this walk that he's asking for donations to our day center. So if you can be there. You can even walk part of the walk with him as he walks through Federal Way. I believe the mayor is be going to do that. And that will be at 11 o'clock at the Farmer's Market. The Salmon Bake is, sat is Friday, the 22nd, from 4 to 8. It's at Steel Lake. And this is our 60th year. So I would encourage you to come. Tickets are $17 or $20. You can buy them before the event or at the event. It's always a nice day. It's supposed to be 79 degrees and sunny. 
And um, in addition to salmon, there's hot dogs, there's ice cream. There's a lot of fun things to do, so I'd encourage you to come. It's one of the longest running events here in Federal Way. And last night, I attended along with um, several other council members a prayer vigil at uh, Steel Lake Presbyterian Church. And prayers were said for our first responders, our citizens, our leaders, and our nation. And um, I have to say, as a mother of a police officer, it's, it's very frightening sometimes to think of what's happening in, in our nation right now. And I appreciate that we gathered as a community to offer prayers and to lift up our community and our nation and our first responders and the families of first responders. Because sometimes it's just kind of scary when you say goodbye when someone walks out the door. So thank you very much. All right, Councilmember Maloney. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to thank the mayor, um, the, the rest of the council and staff for the proclamation for Boeing tonight. Um, I, it's important because we have a lot of um, Boeing residents, or sorry, Boeing employees who are Federal Way residents. And um, I think it's in the centennial year, it's important to recognize that um, not only does Boeing impact our, um, uh, you know, certain cities around the state, but really impacts all of the state, uh, whether they have a facility in that municipality or not, um, they might have employees or they, there might be services that are rendered to the company. Um, and so their impact is significant from an, um, an investment and an economic perspective. And in fact, um, in September, the chamber is um, at their chamber luncheon, they'll be having um, both Boeing, um, Susan Champlain, who's the director of government, um, state and local government for Boeing, will be speaking. And um, actually, I will be speaking also um, on behalf of the Aerospace Futures Alliance and talking about the investment of the aerospace industry as a whole um, on, on the state. So uh, put that on your calendars. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, uh, the September Chamber Luncheon. And um, I, I have uh, had the opportunity to take a quick look at the University Initiative Needs Assessment that's um, been done by the city, and I'm looking forward to that going out and uh, the next steps in the University Initiative that I know we, most of us, or all of us hopefully, are looking forward to, um, and hopefully that will net us um, a college or a university here in the city. Uh, lastly, the next Land Use and Transportation Committee meeting is August 1st at 5 p.m. right here in Chambers. Thank you. Right, thank you. That's Member Seppa Dawson. Thank you. I too just wanted to share um, that I enjoyed the um, opening of the Town Square Park um, and what I also really appreciated was seeing the um, welcome sign that's on the wall that um, Advancing Leadership Youth um, put together two years ago in every language that is spoken in our city and I think that's very important that it, um, it brings the community together. Um, I was excited <coughs> seeing the other language that I read um, up there, seeing it again was just, it uh, was refreshing. So thank you very much. Um, I too attended the uh, prayer vigil last night and it really was moving as um, he was praying for the people, for the families impacted by what's going on in our communities and even in the world. And so um, there's a plan to have a bigger one, hopefully in the fall. and. I'd like to encourage you to stay, stay tuned so you could also be a part of that. Um, and then there was a press release, um, the email that we received from Comcast and HUD that they're expanding their, um, their Internet Essentials program. And so this is a program for low-income families. Um, it used to be for students who qualified for um, the um, free and reduced lunch program and now they're expanding it to families and adults that do not have children. And this is very important because as you all know, a lot of um, jobs are now internet-based, at least you have to submit your applications on, uh, via internet instead of paper. And not everybody can go to the library and access the um, internet, you know, because of time restrictions and whatnot. So I'm really excited about this because even students can do their homework and stuff. So if you're a family who um, are low income, and you think you qualify, please um, go on their website and check it out because it's very important that people can access and be current with, um, with what's going on, you know, with, with um, technology. 
I have a lot of clients that I work with at my job that do not have internet access because it's very expensive. So I'm really excited that Com Comcast is providing the service to um, people. So thank you very much. All right, thank you. Deputy Mayor Burbridge. Thank you very much. Um, I regard the Town Square Park as a very special jewel in our treasure chest of parks. We really have outstanding parks in our city. So thank you to everyone who had a role with our newest addition to that group. Um, I w also was at the um, prayer vigil last night and appreciated it very much. Um, it was very meaningful and I was especially pleased to hear the uh, pastor of uh, Steel Lake Presbyterian Church say that when they are doing the planning for the uh, future gatherings, they will be including um, all faith communities within our, our city. And uh, I was, I'm just extremely, extremely pleased to hear that. Um, looking forward to National Night Out. I attended a meeting of the South County Area Transportation Board this morning. Uh, we had some organizational issues to address, some budget planning and that kind of thing. But we also had a presentation on uh, some planning for the city of Black Diamond. That's a very small city that is uh, expect, expecting a uh, uh, huge residential development to come to town. And so they are very challenged with their transportation planning. We also had a presentation on the 405 uh, tolling work that's going on right now, the, the tolling um, experience that people are having there and how it's how it's working and and some of the challenges they have to deal with um, there's some outstanding events coming up it's amazing how many different events are scheduled in our city any weekend and even during the week uh, additionally saturday mm -hmm. there is po at powell's wood garden on dash point road uh, the annual storytelling festival that begins at nine o'clock in the morning and continues until five in the afternoon. Um, this is an informal presentation of um, wonderful storytelling opportunities for all ages, three different locations within the garden. It's very informal. You can move from one to the other. And the uh, gathering point is at Sacagawea Park on Dash Point Road. There's a, a frequent shuttle service that takes you right down the street to the, to the garden. Also coming up on Saturday, July 30th at 6.30 p.m. is a concert by our Federal Way Symphony at, this is a chamber concert, so it's a smaller number of musicians and it will be at the Knudsen Family Theater at Dumas Bay Center. Again, that's Saturday, July 30th at 6.30 p.m. And um, I'll be at the Salmon Bake, um, looking forward to that and hearing the Boeing presentation this evening, I couldn't help but remember the, um, some of the ways Boeing has, has touched my life. I can remember back in high school in our physics class, we had a field trip to the, uh, the wind tunnel. That was pretty interesting at that age. And more recently, of course, being able to uh, have a tour of the Renton Boeing plant and seeing the Im very impressive work that is going on there, the construction of the planes. And then, of course, taking a flight now and then and, and <laughs> flying in one of, one of those outstanding airplanes. So um, I'm wishing everybody a, a wonderful rest of the week and great weekend with all the activities. <coughs> All right, uh, with that, we uh, next is executive session. We'll be in recess for that purpose for property acquisition pursuant to RCW 4230-1101B.